Hello everyone and welcome to another recommends video. In this video, we are going back to the year 1944 to do a short story by Frederick Brown called Arena. Now this short story has been made into episodes of several different television shows. The Star Trek episode Arena, the Outer Limits episode Fun and Games, the Blake 7 episode Duel, and the He-Man and Masters of the Universe episode The Arena. Before we go on, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, give us a like, and drop us a comment. And now, let's get into the story. The story begins with Carson opening his eyes and realizing that he is lying on blue sand under a blue dome. It was extremely hot and he was naked and drenched in perspiration. He tried to figure out where he was and then he remembered. He had been in his one-man scouter outside the orbit of Pluto about a million miles to one side of the Earth Amada that was getting ready to intercept the Outsider's Amada. Then he heard an alarm when an Outsider scouter came within range of his scouter. No one knew who the Outsiders were, what they looked like, or where they came from other than it was from the general direction of the Pleiades. First they began raiding earth colonies and outposts, then there were small battles between groups of earth ships and outsider ships. The outsider ships were slightly faster while the earth ships had slightly better armaments. And now the outsiders had massed a mighty fleet and was coming towards earth. Just as he was about to shoot at the outsider scouter, suddenly the ground appeared before them and they were headed straight down to the ground, but they were billions of miles away from any planet. He forgot the outsider ship and worked to keep from crashing. That's when he blacked out and woke up naked on the blue sand. The gravity in this place seems to be a little more than Earth normal and he looked around and saw that there were bushes in different shades of blue. He saw something that looked like a lizard and it was bright blue and had more than four legs. Everything was blue except for a red spherical object that was against a distant curving wall. The entire place looked to be 250 yards in circumference. While he was trying to figure out what was going on, that's when he heard the voice in his head. And this is what it said, through spaces and dimensions wandering. And in this space and this time, I find two peoples about to exterminate one and so weaken the other that it will retrogress and never fulfill its destiny, but decay and return to mindless dust, hence it came. And I say, this must not happen. As Carson thought the question, who are you, it answered him. You would not understand completely. I am the end of evolution of a race so old that time cannot be expressed in words that have any meaning to your mind. A race fused into a single entity, eternal. An entity such as your primitive race might become some time from now. So might the race you call in your mind the outsiders. So I intervene in the battle to come, the battle between fleets so evenly matched that destruction of both races will result. One must survive, one must progress and evolve. The voice continued, it is in my power to stop the war, to send the outsiders back to their galaxy, but they will return or your race will sooner or later follow them there. Only by remaining in this space and time to intervene constantly could I prevent them from destroying one another, and I cannot remain. So I shall intervene now, I shall destroy one fleet completely without loss to the other. One civilization shall thus survive, the stronger shall survive, that I cannot and would not change. I merely intervene to make it a complete victory, not a pariah victory to a broken race. On the outskirts of the not yet battle, I pluck two individuals, you and an outsider. I see from your mind that in your early history of naturalism, battles between champions to decide issues between races were not unknown. You and your opponent are here pitted against one another, naked and unarmed, under conditions equally unfamiliar to you both, equally unpleasant to you both. There is no time limit, for here there is no time. The survivor is the champion of his race and that race survives. It is fair, the conditions are such that the accident of physical strength will not completely decide the issue. There is a barrier, you will understand. Brain power and courage will be more important than strength, especially courage, which is the will to survive. 
Carlson tried to interject and say, but while this is going on, the fleets will, and the voice interrupted and said, no, you are in another space, another time. For as long as you are here, time stands still in the universe you know. For you, this place is now real. What you suffer here will be real. And if you die here, your death will be real. If you die, your failure will end your race. That is enough for you to know. And the voice was gone. When Carson looked up, he saw that the red sphere was rolling towards him. He couldn't see any arms or legs, and he got a wave of nauseating hatred coming from it. Carson grabbed the nearby stone with sharp edges and prepared to defend himself. He watched it rolling closer, and then it slammed into an invisible wall and bounced back. He watched as it tried different areas, always with the same result. There was a force field of some sort that ran from one side of the enclosure to the other. Carson didn't have to verify it himself because he watched as the outsider verified it for him. Carson went to the barrier and pushed against it. It felt like a sheet of rubber covering a wall of steel. Carson dug down to see how deep the barrier went. He went down two feet. It was still there. When the outsider was right across from him, he picked up the stone and then dropped it and then began speaking to it asking if we can't have peace. Believing that the outsider was telepathic, he blanked his mind to receive the reply and what he got was a wave of hatred and a lust to kill. Carson now knew it was a fight to the death because the future of humanity depended on him. Because he thought it was telepathic, he thought maybe he could will it to death. That didn't work. He then sat down and watched it trying to learn its weaknesses. The outsider, that he was now calling the roller, went to examine the bush on its side of the barrier. It began breaking off twigs. It struggled to break the twigs. So he looked for a bush on his side that looked the same and went over and tried it. And breaking it was easy for him. He was probably stronger than it, but its skin looked tough. So he went to look for a stone he could shape into a knife. As it was examining the bushes, a little blue lizard ran out from under the bushes and a tentacle came out of the body of the roller and grabbed the lizard. It began pulling its legs off and the little lizard began to scream and when half its legs were off, it stopped moving and the roller threw it away and it flew through the barrier. At first Carson thought the barrier was gone so he ran at the roller and bounced into the barrier. As he was on the ground and looked up he saw something coming through the barrier. It was a rock. The roller had thrown a rock at him. He tried to get out of the way but the rock hit him in the leg cutting his leg. He quickly got up and got a rock and threw it back at it. He found out that he could throw harder and further than the roller could and the roller got hit with the rock and then quickly rolled away. His foot was bleeding but he ignored it as he went to test the barrier. After some testing of the barrier, he figured that living things could not pass through but dead or inorganic material could. Now that he was getting thirsty, he went to look to see if he could find any water. There wasn't any water to be found. His leg was hurting him pretty badly now and he was limping. He went over to one of the bushes, pulled off the leaves, put it against the wound and tied it with the vines from the same tree. He could see that the roller was out of range doing something but he couldn't tell what. As he sat there trying to figure out what to do, the little blue lizard came up to him and he told it hello and to his surprise it answered hello. Then it ran away. So he looked to see what the roller was doing and it was building something. When he looked a little closer, he realized it was building a catapult. He watched as it put a good sized rock into it and let it fly at him. And after that, it began lobbing rocks over towards him via the catapult. He had to keep moving to ensure he didn't get hit and by this time he was nearing the end of his endurance. He got an idea and some of the stones could create a spark so he created fire bombs using the bushes around him and began lobbing them at the roller and one of them hit the catapult and it went up in flames and the roller couldn't save it. He then made a spear just in case he ever got close enough to use it. He used some of the tendrils from the bushes to tie the spear to his right wrist. He was so tired now that he lay down and fell asleep and he was wakened by some thumping. When he opened his eyes he saw that the roller had come close to the barrier and was lobbing stones at him. When it saw him getting up it moved towards the back of its enclosure. 
so he moved to the back of his and fell asleep. When he woke up this time, he felt less tired, but he knew he was in trouble. He was so thirsty, his tongue was swollen, and his leg was swollen. He took off the bandage, and he realized that his leg was infected. And he realized that if he didn't do something soon, he would die from the infection. So he crawled back to the barrier, where he could see that the roller was building another catapult but it too was moving slowly. He lost it for a second or two and began beating on the barrier in anger. That's when the lizard came up to him and said, hello, hurt, kill, hurt, kill, come. He followed it to where the other lizard was lying on the sand squealing, the one that the roller had pulled off its legs. It wasn't dead. It had just been unconscious. The healthy lizard said, hurt, hurt, kill, kill. So Carson killed the injured lizard. So that's when he realized that if you're unconscious, you can also pass through the barrier. So he came up with a plan. When he had dug the hole, he had built up a mound of dirt up against the barrier. So making sure he had his spear and his knife on him, he went up on top of the mound of dirt. Then he struck himself on the head, knocking himself unconscious. Then he rolled down through the barrier to the other side. When he came through, he lay still and opened his eyes a slit to see where the roller was. It was coming close to him very slowly. He waited until it got close enough. He sat up and flung his harpoon at the roller and it stuck deep into the roller. He crawled to it and began stabbing at it with his flint knife while it slashed at him with its clawed tentacles. He kept stabbing and slashing until it stopped moving. When he opened his eyes, he was in the seat of his scout. There wasn't any outsider ship anywhere, nor any planet. The bell he heard was a communication signal. He turned it on and he saw the captain of his mothership, the Magellan, who told him the fight was over and that they had won and that he should come on in. As he set the controls for his return, he wondered if it was all a dream. He got up and went and got some water. He drank six glasses of water. He was very thirsty. He pulled up his trouser legs and looked at his calf. There was a scar there, a healed scar that wasn't there before. He unzipped his shirt and looked at his chest and abdomen and saw that there was tiny, perfectly healed scars. They also weren't there before, so it had happened. When he landed on the mothership, he went straight to the captain's office. Nobody knew exactly what happened. All they know is that they fired one salvo and the whole fleet went up. It jumped from one outsider ship to the other, even to the ones that they did not aim at. The entire outsider fleet disintegrated in front of their eyes and they didn't even get a single paint scratched. They believed that it was some kind of instability in the metal that the outsiders used. All Carson said was, yes sir, too bad I missed all the excitement. He was smart enough to know that if he went and told them, nobody would believe him. And that's how the story ends. I'd like to thank you for watching and listening. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't and drop us a comment and I will see you in the next video.